Hello everyone, um, welcome back to another episode of Doctor Who and Autism Celebrations. Um, everyone today has been involved in the podcast in some way. Um, more recent, I'll, I'll, uh, Catherine was the first one that went on it last year and more recently did a birthday episode because for some reason we have a birthday on the same day. <laughs> yeah. um, and then we, we have Matt um, who was on a few months ago. Um, Dylan a few months ago as well. Um, Alicia last year, Christmas, I think. Yeah, it was Christmas, wasn't it? Um, and Devin a few months ago. Um, so, so that's all cool. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everyone to introduce themselves, even though I've sort of said all your names anyway. So maybe say a fact that no one knows about you. In the past, how people say that they're a singer, so you might be a secret singer. You may not be a singer, that's all right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start with um, Catherine, if you don't mind introducing yourself first. Uh, okay, I'm Catherine. I cosplay various companions, but I'm more known, well, more accidentally known as Sarah Jane. Um, what facts? I've, I've said a lot. I've said a lot. Um, I've got three birthmarks and I've held the Olympic torch. You've held the Olympic torch? I have, the 2012 one. So I can properly say Rose Tyler has held the Olympic torch. Oh, that, that's cool. Yeah. I don't know, I'm, I'm running out of facts. When, when I did drama the other week, I was doing this miming game and I, I, I was trying to reinvent the scene when they were holding an Olympic torch and they're running with it. And no one could guess mm -hmm. what I was doing. I, I was just literally running with the Olympic torch, holding it like that, and no one knew. But I, yeah. I, did, I did a Sarah Jane scene for my drama course as well. No one knew what it was. Yeah. It's silly, isn't it? But, yeah, thank you, um, Catherine, for coming on again. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so, Matt, hello. Hello, the 15th Doctor. Hi, guys. I'm Matt. And some of you may or may not know me. I'm sort of a newbie cosplayer and voice actor of the Doctor Who community. And today I'm representing Chutigatwa because he's already one of my favorite doctors. Fun fact about me, um, I voice the 11th Doctor <laughs> in three separate audio productions. I know, I sound like Matt Smith sometimes. And my name's literally Matt and I'm born on the 11th. And um, I guess you can say many things have led me to meeting Matt Smith and finding that there are a lot of things about me that associate with Matt Smith. Have you met Matt Smith? Yes, a uh, brief interaction with him at LFCC Winter, I think. It was a really oh, funny interaction. I remember you saying I think last I mentioned time. it on, yeah, I mentioned yeah. it on the last episode. I was yeah, my memory's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine it's fine <laughs> yeah yeah listen back to that episode guys yeah yeah um i even forget I've met, i forget who i meet sometimes um but yeah i i think i think i think that's great and it's good that you your favorite doctor's the 15th doctor um yeah um even he's though we haven't like seen him yet favorites. yeah yeah he, he he's he's got so many different costumes so he, a stylish time lord you can say <laughs> yeah i saw him recently wearing a we're in a Scottish kilt. That that is interesting. He was, yes. Yeah, that, that is in interesting. Cardiff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, in Cardiff. Um, in Cardiff, the same place where Rose took place. Like I think it was yeah. the building. That Rose it was, in. yeah, yeah. I, I really I, like to build, blow up that building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very interesting because when I was in Cardiff last year, I I went in the building, um, and. Like, you know, the mall where, where the Autons are and the Rose episode. And it's just opposite it is where that building is. Um, but it's, yeah, it's it's very the cool. More we know. The more I we don't, know. Don't know if Rose Tyler will make an appearance, though. Who knows? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Well, so thanks, Matt. Um, Dylan, hello. Hello, my name is Dylan. Um, I'm a cosplayer. Um Three facts about me. Uh, I've been cosplaying for 10 years. Second one is I cosplay all the Doctors from the first Doctor up until I am working on the 15th Doctor. So that will be coming very soon this year. 
um, probably the next couple of weeks or so, maybe, or before at least the 60th anniversary next month. Um, my two favourite doctors uh, are David Tennant, mainly, and Colin Baker, the sixth doctor from the classic series. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. I can't believe it that you cosplay everyone. Like, well, you, that, is, that is indeed, yeah. It takes yeah. up a lot of my space in my house and wardrobe, but yeah. it's certainly worth it and stuff. And I think, like many people, you grow up, you just want to be your heroes, don't you, really? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're all different and they're all good in their own ways, all the doctors. and Indeed. Yeah. I've all confessed, I think the sixth doctor is the one I'm more obsessed about than anything else, really. So, because yeah. I kind of would like to one day have a sixth doctor shrine, really. You know, I'm thinking about getting. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about doing, really. So, that's what I do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Connor Baker is nice. Yeah, um, He's a very nice man. Very nice man, indeed. Yeah, they're all, they're all they're all lovely people to be honest with you. I mean, I've met them all, except for William Hartnell, Patrick Trout, and John Pertwee. And sadly, not, I didn't get a chance to meet John Pert. Um, mm. Those are the only four I didn't get to meet. But I've met all the all the others, and other than Shuti Gatwa, who I have yet to meet. Yeah, I've I've heard he's lovely though. Hmm, he looks yeah. like a very nice man indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm really really excited for his doctor because. I kind of, we all kind of get the new dots to come in and be the next best thing, don't we? And it'd mm-hmm. be fantastic. But this time I'm hoping, like with Matthew, that um, he might be my new favourite, you know, because I do think he's very unique and just looks very good, really. And especially I like the kilt on the location as well. It looks really good to him in the kilt, really. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm just, I'm really, really excited for you to get well. But also I'm excited for David coming back as well. Yeah. yeah it sounds fantastic, you know. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, because Shooty's Scottish as well, so it makes sense for him to wear the kilt. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Scotland for the win. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And giving it some hot posh as well, so it's good for me as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I remember going to Scotland. It was my first holiday, and I wore a kilt. Went there, wore a kilt. Uh, I was ashamed because everyone laughed at me. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I want to kill his wife. One was for a wedding. One was for a new year event. Mason, you yeah, look great with the Scottish kilt. Just saying. Yeah, I have to find Sorry. a picture. I'll have to find oh, a yeah, picture. I'll, I'll definitely find that picture of me wearing the kilt. Um, but yeah, like so many choices for Shooty Gatwa. Well, he's going to be a great doctor. But thanks, Dylan. And also as well, um, I used to wear a lot of like check clothing. I wear a lot of check tartan suits as well, actually, and. I never thought to say David would come back and wear a Czech tartan mm. outfit, really. And at that time, before then, I called myself a tartan doctor as a side doctor of my own. So I've done my own doctor costume as well for my own doctor. And I don't, who would ever thought that David would wear tartan or Czech clothing again in the future or so? I never, ever would. Because his, his outfit looks fantastic as well. And I've done that one as well. So Yeah, like, um, but do we know that... Um... On his new 14th Doctor costume, that he's got one leg um, trouser leg is longer than the other one. That's right. Oh, is it? I know that yeah. the trouser foot he folds the side yeah. of the end of the trousers up, and the other side he doesn't. Yeah, because when I got it, I had to go to my tailors to to change it because it's unusual to have one longer than the other. And then I got sent yeah. a picture from what well, I bought it from, and they say, yeah. If you look at this picture, David Tennant has one longer than the other, so it's quite unusual. Mm. But... I bought mine from um, my suit was from Dobell, yeah. and like some other fans, I cut the lapels off a blazer and just and I sewed them by hand onto the jacket. I'm gonna update that because mine's got white on it, so I need to make it burgundy so it blends in. But I'm working on that as an update in the future. So okay, okay. Well, I, I look forward to seeing that. Um, I told Dylan, but thank you for coming back on, Dylan. It's going to be great to talk about more about Doctor Who. Um, no, thank you. You as well. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Dylan. Um, Alicia, long time no see. Would you mind doing an introduction of yourself? Uh, yeah. Hi, um, I'm Alicia. Um, I cosplay mainly Rose Tyler, but I am hoping to branch out to other companions and doctors um fun fact about me I don't know (laughs) um I 
I think you should mention the poison ivy cosplay you did recently. <laughs> okay, yeah, I should. Um, every year during October, I dress up every day of the month, and I have enough costumes, as a few people here know, to not only cosplay every day of October, but probably into November and even December. So I I have a cosplay obsession. <laughs> that's yeah. an interesting fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um that's an, a competition with Dylan here. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um yeah I think at this point we just need a cosplay wardrobe. Well you probably do have a cosplay wardrobe. I, I uh, have a whole room. Yeah a whole room. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But you've come dressed as Rose Harder today, so I have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She she's my girl. Yeah. She's your bestie. She is my bestie. She I mean Prince Girl Jane. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll definitely talk about more, more Rose Tyler going into the episode because we have some important things we want to say about her. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, th- thanks Alicia for, for coming on again. Um it'd be really fun. So Devin, hello. You mind doing an introduction of yourself? But you're on mute, like me, at the start, remember? (laughs) There we go. Okay, hi. Hello. Hi, Devin here. I've pretty much been at this since... uh since high school i i got into it when i was in high school and it was because of a few friends of mine and then only recently last year i met i met i met Catherine, aka sarah jane over here one of my best friends who um who has honestly helped me out a lot and i heavily appreciate it maddie who is our most recent goofball who I've uh, come to adore and then um, which is kind of it's kind of funny because I think about it now because I've told the story to a few friends of mine but I have um, during Christmas I happened to be wearing 10 Alicia happened to be wearing Rose at the time when I first met her so that was kind of a funny thing but it was it was a really sweet thing. I'm, I think, quite honestly, with everything that we have here, I'm so glad we all met. Couldn't be any more appreciated of that. Bad Wolf has all led us here. <laughs> well, yeah. You just happen to be wearing tight and shortness I, as well. I try my best. I try my best. Bad yes, Wolf no. exists. Bad Wolf exists. Yeah, Coach, no. Prove it. Prove it. Bad thing. Wolf exists. Okay, <laughs> Maddie. Maddie, here was the thing. I was just looking for stuff to do, and here she comes right on my For You page. It was... And she had filmed right in the snow, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do this. And, well, here we are. <laughs> You're gonna have to tell me about that story in the snow privately, shortness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it is it is good that you've made good friends. Well, you're well friends, but it's it's good the way you've made friends and it's, it's, it's maybe nice shortness can tell us about the story in the snow if Mason allows it. <laughs> if it's not appropriate, is it appropriate? It's appropriate. I was just gonna say, long story short, it was a blizzard. And okay. I decided to well, go out we'll into leave it. The story time in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, blizzard. We don't get blizzards here in the UK. Do we not? Not that much. Not? not not that much. Um, we got well, snow. That that that's for certain. We have snow. Yeah. When's the last time we had snow, Matt? Uh, uh I think it was. Ka- Catherine Dylan, do you guys know? <laughs> My memory's <laughs> fuzzy. I believe. Like last April. 2021 we had snow and that was during the third lockdown and that was handy because since all the schools were closed not maybe went to work it was quite handy so you also get a lot of people who have like missed a day of work or school 
and that sort of thing. So last time I remember having it down here on my end was two years ago, February time. Yeah. Pretty, 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 pretty a while ago. Well, that, that's a while ago. Then. Yeah. But do we not get blizzards here? Have we never had a blizzard? We must have one. We've never we had, had a tornado or anything. Do you remember when it snowed like for a day in March? It was March the 8th. I remember it because I was in college and it just came down on us. And it was gone by the next day. Gone like the wind. Yeah, literally. It was like really deep. I remember I that. I, I don't know about you guys, but um, I remember at school and whenever it snowed and they did not allow us to go out, out, out outside because it was it was too much snow. <laughs> that sucks. What's the point of what's the point of having fun in the snow then? If you're not yeah, even allowed to get out. Yeah, I know. That's outrageous. Yeah. It's like yeah. saying winter is first, that. stay indoors. No, winter is You winter. know what? There was a school my mum used to work in, and they had a snowball fight one time in the, in the, in the, snow, in the, in the playground. Massive snowball fight. It was absolutely a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm yeah. in now. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny the, when you the have a snowball. The great fight. snowball war. <laughs> yeah, oh, if you get the reference, no, you no, get no, the no. reference. <laughs> oh no um i was once at um it, it was a trip it, this was back when i was working i was working at a chiropractic clinic and we went to the, one of those airbnbs i had no idea what those were called at the time I, it was just called a cabin we didn't i didn't know that that was a thing i just called it a cabin so we decided to have because of the yard because of how huge the yard was we decided to have like a bit of a snowball fight just you know drop all the work stress and everything just be kids have fun and then and then i was like because my boss um i decided to get my boss from behind and i and i decided to run away from him just thinking that i got him i forgot that my boss grew up in canada so he grew up in the snow and he sniped me from 50 feet right <laughs> on the head <laughs> oh dear oh no you got yeah i should not snowball. have messed with my boss uh, you know, don't grumpy. mess with people who the live around snow. <laughs> Especially Canadians. <laughs> oh got, yeah, no. You got widow snow, you can say. Widow frosted? I'm bad with frosted. Widow frosted and then I got a snowman dumped on me by my cousins. Oh god. <laughs> The lot, the yeah, I will, yeah, I will, yeah, yeah, no, a whole block of like snow and ice like crumbling right on your head. Yeah, no, that's a migraine and a half. Oh, bless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Soon be Christmas, guys, eh? I'll talk, I'll talk all this now. Um, so, getting into the 60th anniversary um, specials, um, the first question I have is, um, what did we all think of the trailer, the official trailer? Effing fantastic and brilliant. And there's so <laughs> many more words to describe it. Your nine is showing. Do you know what? Hey, listen, that trailer was amazing. Um, it was, yeah. Okay, legit reaction. I was watching I was watching in the living room. I was like jumping around and then when Shooty Gatwa appeared, I screamed. Like I literally screamed. <laughs> I was like, the king is back. <laughs> <laughs> And when Neil Patrick Harris, he had like the the thing with the puppet strings, I was like, Toymaker, I see you. I see you. You're not fooling oh, me. Yeah, You're definitely the toy let's, let's be honest, right? Let's be honest. When he was first announced, we all saw his pictures of him as a toy maker. I think we all knew he was a toy maker. Let's face it, as hardcore fans, we all knew he was a special yeah. toy maker. Yeah, but we, we need an official it. confirmation, you know? So, like, my phone That's what we needed, yeah, of course. Twitter and all but that. let's be oh, honest, we all knew it. The thing, With the toys on the ground, the toy shop, that was the good, that was the clue. And also, two weeks before the trailer, there was um, a wooden, like, picture or something of um, a clown that appeared in the special toy maker back in 66. It was on wood, a picture of that clown, which gave it a massive, massive clue it was. Yeah. So, you know, you get a wood sculpture. Of a Dylan, how did you figure that one out? You're you're it, the true who spy. Like forget it, about well, us. I'll be He's honest, the well, I'll be honest, I think it was last month or month before. I did watch the recon on Daily Motion for the Sensible Toy Maker. I haven't seen it before because it was a missing episode. But and obviously I've seen pictures of it as well. Um, and again, I watched the recon a couple of months ago, mm. and it's actually a really good story. Actually, I mean, some people don't really like it, but I think it's actually one of Hartnell's best episodes. To be fair. 
Did you spot it in the trailer though? That that will that 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 thing they posted. It was in the trailer, but did you see it? Yeah, and also what was it? Um, what was I going to say as well? The original toy maker was played by Michael Goff, who went on to play Alfred in the first four Batman films from Batman and Eight and Nine. Played... Who did he play? Did he play Batman at one point? No, he played Alfred. No, MPH uh, and Neil Patrick Harris. Didn't he play Batman at one point? No. No, he didn't. No. no. Oh, he played. Wait, who did he? He was, he was in um, It's a Sin. Oh. He was one of the... Um, he, he he worked in a suit shop and um, he died, sadly, of AIDS in the hospital in the uh, mid-early 80s, I think it was. I've never seen Sound It's a character, Sin. Yeah. Sorry, it's I'm amazing, It's a Sin. If, if anyone has not seen It's a Sin... It is written by Russell Davis. It is absolutely amazing. You should all go and watch it. Mason, have you seen it? Um, what's it about, Dylan? Um, it's about the gay community in um, the early 80s oh. and about the AIDS pandemic. Oh, yeah. I have seen it. I did. I saw it. It's the, yeah. um, it's, it's the one with that singer in it. Ollie, Ollie, Alexander. Um, Ollie Alexander, I think. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's him. Yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, it it's very good. It is, it is it's a good one. Um, yeah. yeah, everything Russell T writes is good. So, it's... Kate Stewart's coming back yeah. again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, the thing about She's Russell coming back and also David for a little bit is that I never thought I'd be living my childhood, reliving my childhood for a little while into my adulthood. <laughs> uh, that, 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 that's actually the the funniest thing that I noted because um and it was just recently it, it seems like a lot of things from our respective childhoods have come back to say hi have you been you remember me like like Pokemon had recently just celebrated its anniversary so did like Power Rangers Blues Clues and you had like a big movie and it brought back Steve and Joe, so then it's like now that David, like even David coming back, that really feels like that everything that we had all growing up is, and now we're we're grown, we're fully grown. It comes back to like say, hey, do you still rem- remember? Do you still adore us the same way you did? And it's like what I said before as well, like um, Hayden Christensen, you and McGregor come back as Obi Wan and Anakin in Star Wars. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just watched. Yeah, I just watched uh, Hayden's performance in uh, in Ahsoka, and holy crap, he can still throw down. But like, yeah, yeah no, he is. He, he looks amazing in the Clone Wars outfit. He, he did. looks amazing in that. Yeah, it, it was. It, it's something that I do love about this day and age, where it feels mm-hmm. like a lot of what we grew up with, we we don't even think about it at first because some of us are still in it. But as soon as like a certain face or a certain episode that may come up or not, it all just comes flooding back. That sense of childlike wonder, that real yeah. spark. And also, and also Toby Maguire as Spider Man. Oh yeah, Toby and Andrew, yeah. Hmm? And then it, the it, Green Goblin. It, and what what they do with it is that they wrap it up so beautifully. They give us like it's this thing of like they take us back on a little bit of a trip but then it's also it's like we get to hand it off to the next people who get to enjoy it we get to they get to enjoy what we did as well exactly yeah and it's emotional i always thought hayden was a good actor i don't know why the haters are hating on him he has always been a good actor oh god don't get me started i get get why but you've got to admit when you think about anakin skywalker that's what you kind of think of I mean, mm-hmm. okay, listen, I grew up watching Star Wars. I'm not really a Star Wars fan now, but I have grew up watching Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I have seen, like, all three of the sequel films, and Revenge oh, of the Sith nice. has always been iconic to me, and um, seeing Hayden Christensen and um, Ewan McGregor back as Anakin and Obi-Wan, it literally brought back a lot of nostalgia for me. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah it did. It, did. It, it was really good. Hayden, Hayden, no doubt, deserved a lot of the love. A lot of the actors that we grew up with, like Hayden, Andrew, Toby, like, even, David, like, Stephen, Catherine. Steve, 
yeah a lot of the actors that we grew up with like now it's like they come back and it, it more or less feels like they never left but also at the same time they kind of give us like a very fond farewell and it's emotional we're crying and it's and yet we're smiling at the same time it is a beautiful thing well to be fair we are going to see david Tennant regenerate again <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot well, of us know what his last line might be. Job. You know. I think a lot of us as well don't know as well what his last line might be. A lot of it's rumoured to be like, I want to go now or something. Mm. No, no, it's... Yeah, I'm ready to go. I don't know. When I first heard about that, I always thought, that's a, a little cliche in it if they do something that makes a callback to like end of time. like Yeah, but as well though, when you have in the opening scene, Power, after he regenerates, he goes, I know these teeth. And obviously, back yeah. in the part of the way, he goes, new teeth, that's weird. So that was a nice little nod. Yeah. That that, that was, yeah. I don't that, think it'll be sort of like the end of time, because we're not facing the Daleks or Davros. We're facing the Celestial Poiman. And, yeah. well, no, let's not forget that the wall, let's not forget, we're also dealing with Beep the Meep as well. So those are two Beep villains that we know. If we don't know what else we're dealing with. Do we... Do we notice? Do we notice in the trailer when they're doing all these flashbacks, but that they do a scene from the waters of Mars, um, where the Doctor is just yeah. standing there, which has no relevance to Donna at all because that episode weren't about Donna. So <laughs> I found that quite funny when I saw that. Yeah, that was maybe it's because uh... David Tennant was just like looking very cool standing like this, like <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, is is this the pro? Is this a really cool shot? And they're like, yeah, this is a cool shot of David Tennant. Let's just put it in the trailer for fan appeal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well. if it works. <laughs> There's also a rumor as well that um, I mean, I'm not really keen on the last line of David when he was generated as a man. I don't want to go. I'm sure not many of us are a fan of that, really, but um. There's a rumour as well that when he says that, he actually means it, that he can't go, there's something else he has to do, so there could be a relation to this and that, really. Yeah. He always, and, that's he what you're probably, and that's what you're probably referring to, mate, some of the scenes from Waters of Mars, maybe. Mm. Yeah, because he said no in that scene. Um, mm. he, he's already he, no about something. He broke all, all these rules and he, he don't want to go, so... Um, there are a few mysteries unraveled in the trailer when because we remembered when we first saw the teaser trailer, David was talk, the doctor was talking about like if Don remembers me, she'll die. And then in the next trailer, you see oh he's talking to Ruth Madeley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is Ruth Madeley like a unit kind of yeah. genius because she was with Unit? So. I think she's Kate's what understudy. Exactly? What like exactly Oscar. Ruth Madeley becomes my companion big finish. Is she the new Osgood? Is Shirley Ann Bingham the new Osgood? Maybe. We uh, we Madeline. don't know how she's gonna. And on the fa- and on the whole fact of uh, the freaky place having its own uh, Avengers Tower kind of thing, <laughs> like having its own. I'm like, well, really? Disney Plus means there's got to be some intertextuality references. Such as I think as well. <laughs> I think as well. When um, Russell wanted to, one of his regrets he had said in the early years of Doctor Who is that if streaming services like Netflix and that were available, he would have put stuff like on certain streaming devices for us to watch and all that. Bigger and I budgets. Think, like, and I think this time the idea of the Hooniverse is is this is exactly what he wants to do. He wants to do like an MCU thing for Doctor Who, but like do Ooh. spin-off stuff and put them in other brand mediums and stuff like Netflix, Disney Plus, Sci Fi. You know, trying to expand on the Doctor Who universe, I think. I think that's what he wants to do. If you're going to do that, Unit and um, oh, uh, Torchwood. No, uh, Marvel's. Oh my goodness, Agents. Is there? Yes, Shield. Unit and Shield working together would be awesome. (laughs) I mean, Janice Gemma Simmons is a huge Doctor Who fan in character, so. Dr. Gemma Simmons, the, like the scientist from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, d- yeah. Um, she is a huge Doctor Who fan in character. Keeps on referencing the targets. The other thing I did notice is like, is like as soon as I was like done geeking out over it, like when we hear the, the regeneration 
wind chime, I want to say, is what the sound effect is, because it sounds like a bunch of wind chimes banging together to make that sound. Like, when the wind chimes make and you see shooty, I had to, I had to play it back a few times, because you hear Jody's gasp during yeah. it, and I'm like, did they just throw that sound in, or what's going on with that? Why? That, they maybe. would not have thrown that sound just in there if that, that wasn't a story point. Maybe. There is a theory that all of the 60th is an illusion by the toy maker, and that 13, Jody Whittaker is actually going to regenerate into Shuti Gatwa, like, properly. That mm -hmm. is a theory, anyway. But the because... toy maker is meddled by three yeah. days. If we like know all about the Celestial Toy Maker and um we know he's an illusion master and if any of you seen DW twenty twelve's portrayal of the Toy Maker, it could it could be like that the whole all the sixtieth, Donna and Rose and not not Rose Tyler, I'm talking about Rose Temple Noble, like daughter of Donna. Yeah. And you know, Unit and um Shirley Ann Bingham, whoever the heck she is. It could all just be an illusion by the toy. Well, we don't know. Well, we don't know. And I got to admit, when Neil Patrick Harris was first announced, um, because I grew up with him because he was Spider Man for the MTV series. So growing up with him, Spider Man, was that, that was the role. That that was what I what I like got mixed. Yeah, up. he was wow. also in. Yeah, he also reprised that role for a video game called Spider Man: Shattered Dimensions. The other thing that I grew up with him in is when he was freaking Barney Stitson. Because as soon as I saw the tux, as soon as I saw him in the tux, instantly uh, it brought back memories of watching How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> I think the first time I ever saw Neil Patrick Harris was in the Smurfs. <laughs> oh my god, that's right. I was like, okay, uh, I was like, oh, this this guy looks pretty cool, and then I saw him in the Oscars, and then I was like, wait, he's he's gonna be the toy maker? Cool. I, was I like, saw cool. him in the Matrix. So, oh yeah, okay. he's good. Oh yeah, he was in Matrix. I forgot. Like, yeah. I previously, um, I saw it, I saw him in It's a Sin. Oh, Jonathan thought... Groff is gonna be in the next series. Agent Smith from Matrix. Oh, nice. And Christoph. Yeah. The... Oh yeah. The uh, the other thing about it, like with Neil, because I was thinking, because I know how much of a comedic actor he is, and yes, I know he can pull serious off, like he's done as Spider Man. At least because I saw the screenshots, I'm like, how are they going to pull this guy being the villain off? I mean, I know he has a well, decent acting range, but I wasn't sure. And then the trailer dropped, and then this one, the recent one, I was like, okay, suffice to say, this man officially scares the ever living hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's I mean, about, I yeah. think what shocks me about the new trailer compared to the old trailer, we got a Christmas Day, which is very nice. The Christmas Day trailer was nice it was light it was exciting whereas this one was not what it's i thought more it would be. I thought it'd be like light and exciting it was darker it was sick some free specials christmas day trade was like really exciting and light but they, they're really getting into a darker tone for this one i'm really i was amazed at how they've done that in the between the two trailers i thought you know it was amazing how they've done that the difference between the lighter trailer and christmas day Fed the darker tone a few weekends ago we had. So and we got I'm a bit still more. No Bernard. How are they gonna play I actually, I'm I am actually really interested, like how will like the relationship of the doctor and the toy maker be? I know it's gonna be like antagonistic with each other, but how antagonistic are we gonna get? Because I think there could I think there, I think there could be a nod to the first time we met the toy maker and the celestial toy maker in sixty six, because and there ought to be really um, mm. And also, you know, the toy maker does say to the doctor, "Oh, he remembers me." And the doctor's face looks quite horrifying. So, I reckon that's their first meeting, and the doctor will say about, "Oh, this is the last time I saw you." And I missed out this bit, but um, well, apparently, in, in the episode of the Toy Maker, um, the doctor has actually met the toy maker before, but off, off, obviously off screen. So, unless it's a wibbly wobbly, tiny wibbly kind of nod quote intended there could be something like that going on do you reckon mm -hmm. they're going to reference dodo and steven i, I doubt so. it as much as i'd like it to be it probably it won't be sadly mm -hmm. i mean they're the only two people apart from the doctor who knows who the toy maker is so 
Exactly, yeah. And Peter Perbs is still alive to this day. Mm-hmm. Maybe like a cameo. Maybe mm-hmm. Stephen Taylor will make a cameo. Yeah. And then there's and then there's the B plot line, like the sub plot line, because we know we have the toy maker, and then we have freaking beep the meep. I'm like, okay, what's he? Okay, what's gonna he be up to during this whole thing? Well, he's a bloody Martian in the shed. So <laughs> the thing I'm really interested about is how the Doctor, um, mm-hmm. knowing that if Donna remembers him, she will die. He also goes into the house, searching for Beep the Meep, and then Donna's right in front of him, and he knows that's going to harm her. So it's, I'm really interested about that bit. Why has he gone in there? And Not Sylvia convenient. just goes like... <laughs> yeah. Yep. That was like, funny. Yeah. Here we go again. <laughs> yeah, because Sylvia, that's the first time she would have done that. because yep. she. she... I don't think she's never done that before. No, she's never slapped him. Jackie did it first. Yeah, Jackie and Martha's mum. Your Uh, mum, Alicia. My mum. Completes the trio. Completes the the trio. (laughs) Completes the cycle. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. Martha's mum. Martha's mum. I forgot about Martha's mum, Mrs. Jones. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the Lazarus experiment. And then, yeah. Clara's done it, and maybe Bill. Bill has sort of done it, but with a gun. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, oh. Yaz never did it. Why has Yaz never done it before? Wow. Because Jodie was a woman. Probably. That's why. Hmm. Yaz is, I mean, Yaz's mom, well, she she's pretty nice, I guess. The thir- 13 really didn't really have a bad impression. Of her. Didn't really say the mom that much, really? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no hate to the 13th Doctor era, but I think apart from Graham and Dan, the other two companions were a little bit bland. Mm. Sorry, Yaz, Ryan. Sorry. I'm not going to offend a few people, but that's just my opinion. Well, Graham and Dan. Graham and Dan. Like, they have more... Don't don't insult evil Dan like that. Graham... No, no, I said Dan Dan and Graham have more character. I think they're more... Evil Dan. Yeah, I think think Graham... I think Graham is the best companion from Jodie's era, if I'm honest. He is. He is. No, no. I'll tell you something. Like, like, like Matt, this is no hate towards the film, Doctor, but as we know because of the scripts. But when, um, you know, when Captain Jack met Graham for the first time and said he was the Doctor, I felt that Graham was the Doctor um, <laughs> at that time, like how he was being... <laughs> He has been mistaken for the Doctor yeah. once in Spyfall, second in Fugitive of the Jadoon. So yeah, that, that that that's what I mean. Yeah, he did well, we feel like. Oh, what if Bradley Walsh is the Doctor? That that would be interesting. So he's up Bob the Clown, so. Yeah, he's the Clown in Adventures, isn't he? Yeah, that's quite funny. Yeah, maybe that's why he wanted to Yaz return. Gonna come back for the future. <laughs> Do you think Yaz is going to come back? That would be certainly something else, wouldn't it, if she did, if she got to. I hope they're gonna name drop her for the sixtieth because we're gonna be hearing David Tennant saying probably name dropping a few, you know, names such as Amy, Rory, Clara, River, da- Dan, Graham, Yaz, Ryan, whatever. Hmm. I well, think he's definitely gonna name drop. It's only gonna be set a few days after the thirteenth Doctor's last episode, so it's not gonna be long since Yaz left. Oh, imagine David. Yeah, and then he will remember well, them all. He well, yeah, them. well, yeah, because in between, because in between that time that we have the anniver- the anniversary, we had the comic, which which was his first few adventures um, off screen, and then so there's a lot of time that he's probably had since the then. The Sonic gets destroyed by the Daleks, by the way. His- all right. Yeah. We, yeah. we, we don't know how the stick if it's going to start. We don't know if it's going to start in the past. Like We don't know if that regeneration was an illusion right at the start. So we, 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 we don't know. How uh, will David get this Sonic, though? Will it just pop out of the TARDIS or he just makes it himself? It looks tardis Yeah, Yeah, it looks, it looks like, yeah, because we do you know that the TARDIS... From the TARDIS. Well, yeah, the TARDIS is capable of making sonic screwdrivers, so... Where did this one came from, then? Where did this one came from? 
Well, nine had it beforehand. I mean, yeah, nine, yeah, that, yeah, that was nine. Yeah, where did That's nine, nine I... get this one though? It did actually show it, did he? He just got it. <laughs> Yeah, he, he just, just got, got it. it. So, like, where did he get it from? Did he just make it, or did the TARDIS make it for him? They might do that with the five doctor, then he just have it in his hand. <laughs> well, hmm. we'll see. Well, we'll see when the sixtieth. We'll, we'll see when the sixtieth comes out because because uh, it, again, get... it's a lot of it's a lot of guesswork with this mm-hmm. thing. If any of you get to see Russell T Davis, ask him how did he get this Sonic. Is it from the TARDIS or did he make it or did he nick it from someone? If we, even if we did see him, he wouldn't say anything unless the, unless afterwards we've seen it. So. We'll pull pull the yeah. Sonic on him and be like, if you don't tell me, I will Sonic you. <laughs> to be honest, despite being My a Sonic wire, device will say. triplicate the brain waves and cause your brain to go... <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. We're a month away. Oh, no. I mean, Russell, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. No, not kidding. I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, we're a month away, and let's face it, the one thing I want right now, really, is the dates when these episodes will air. Yeah. What yeah. dates, Denham, what dates do you want them to air on? It's rumoured to be the 11th of November, I've heard a rumour, but maybe, like, the week of the 23rd November, maybe. It, it won't be 23rd November, but definitely, because that's on a Thursday. Mm-hmm. But maybe, like, three, three Saturdays in November, maybe, like, one after the other. Like Golly, isn't the LFCC at 11th of November to 12? Pandorica's there oh. as well. Ooh. Is, yeah. Are they going to like premiere to us at Comic Con? <laughs> that would have been amazing. It would be nice. It would be nice. You'll miss it. <laughs> uh, like, Gali, are, are you going at LFCC on Sunday? Um, I'm not sure at the moment. I'm more thinking Saturday at the moment. Oh, Gally's not probably not gonna miss it then. I'm probably gonna miss it. Ugh. No, but I to be honest, I I I wouldn't think it would dare then. Like I know there's a rumor for the eleventh, but really the the the, the 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 birthday celebration of Doctor Who is the twenty third of November. So like like we said, it would make more sense to have it maybe on that the eighteenth. Start all off on the eighteenth, and then maybe they would just stream it live on BBC One. Yeah, stream it for the whole day maybe because it's three specials and on the birthday. Mm. So, uh, I don't think I do that. I mean, how did they do I, it I on the day it. of the Doctor? How did they do it back? back, back? That 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 was, was on the twenty third on a Saturday. That was in cinema as well. Yeah. It was really really by coincidence twenty third was on a Saturday, but I'd love it to be on the Thursday though. I, I like maybe one of the specials because it is the twenty third. Yeah. Um, I reckon... well, we'll have to sit. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mason, there is one thing I'd like to mention when talking about 60th. The yeah. recent BBC proms. Oh, yeah. Well, you were there, uh, weren't you? Yeah. I well, wasn't. Was but no, Mason was. I heard enough news that um, Chuchigatwa and Millie Gibson's themes were heard. Oh, yes, I got some information about that. Um, I, I wasn't there, but... Do tell, do tell um, Mason. Um, do tell. So, on as this is get recorded, it is November because we are recorded in advance, and nobody will be time on me. But for people who are here now, um, so October fifteenth, you can listen on to it, um, to the music that they played there on the radio. Um, oh wow! BBC Radio guys. Yeah, I think Radio Two, I think. Um, but but yeah, so you can basically, I think they played the fifteenth Doctor's new theme. They played Ruby's new theme and the new theme for the intro of Doctor Who. So your new opening. So they have three new themes, um, and apparently they're really good. Um, Ruby's theme is going to be playing the piano, yeah. and apparently Millie Gibson's going to play like her character is actually going to play a piano. Yeah, she, she's wearing a piano topper in, in one primer pic that she got shared. So, so um, the, Ruby's theme is um just like Clara's theme. It's going to be diegetic. Both the character and the audience has heard of it. Um, because twelve yeah. played Clara's theme in I think Heaven Sent. Hell bent. Hell, hell bent. Ooh, ooh. So Ruby, probably Ruby's gonna be just as important as Clara if her theme's gonna be diegetic. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be interesting to to hear all these different themes. Um, and I think at the prom they played all the old ones that we like anyway, like the Eleventh Doctor one. Roses, I think roses. I I don't know what there, but I imagine as as many of the older themes that we love. 
movie page that you're waiting for the Sarah Jane soundtrack. Yeah. They've done talk they've done class. I'm still waiting. Yeah, that it's never on any of the uh you always have to go to YouTube to to see it. I think Matt Smith's I'm the Doctor is one of the best music themes ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good yeah. one. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Any theories on the new Capaldi series? as well. Capaldi we figured out who is who are the other actors, like the characters are going to be, maybe, or what's going to happen in the Christmas special with Shooty? Um, so the Christmas special is rumored to be called um, A Church on Ruby Road, um, and what this would lead, I, I think the whole the events of the 60th anniversary will lead into the Christmas special, um, and. What I think is potentially Do- Donna will not die in the 60th. I don't believe she'll die. But for some reason, the doctor will be at a church in a graveyard. I don't know why. But I think, I think, I, d- I don't think Ruby is from this century. I-, I think she's from the future. I think. Ooh. Huh. Well, I mean, Ruby, Ruby dresses up in modern clothing. Maybe she's like mm-hmm. Clara. I've heard she's fostered. Do you think um, Anita Dobson, who uh, um, is appearing in the new series, um, she might be like a grandmother to Ruby, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. That would be really cool. That would be really cool because Anita Dobson's iconic and it would be really good for her to have a bit of a relationship with the current companion, I think, her character. What I think is um, her actual mum and dad... At the start of the new series, she'll, we'll see her actual mum and dad. They'll swan off for some reason. Um, because I, I, I remember in some filming uh, ages ago, uh, when they when they started the new series, that she was shouting mum, and uh, they drove away in the taxi. So I imagine that was her actual mum, and then she got adopted um, at a young age. So, yeah. This will be an interesting pairing, because the Doctor and Ruby are orphans. In a way, they are orphans. Well, Ruby is. The Doctor, in a way, is. This is going to be a really interesting pairing. Hopefully, it's not romantic because we've had enough heartbreaks. No, no. no, no. no. We've had enough heartbreaks. We've, Can I just say, I don't think really great... Okay, I, I, we've I, had I, enough. No, I don't think it's definitely going to be... No. Can I be honest? Mm, I don't really no, rate it's the, not. I don't really rate Ten and Rose's love story because, obviously, Rose is still with Mickey. And technically, it would be an affair. I I I'm all in for a um eleven and Clara romance because they no 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 <laughs> just no uh-uh. I mean no. like have you seen them they're like you know like they obviously like each other but they just don't want to say it out loud it's like it's too sexual thank you very much <laughs> too no no too yeah no yeah I don't think anyone agrees there Matt hmm. <laughs> eleven's too flirty with everyone. <laughs> um, any theories on who's Jinx Monsoon playing? Oh, a darling, a darling. It's still a mystery to this day. Like, who is Jinx Monsoon playing in the new series? I don't, I don't know, but I'm, I know, I'm, I'm so ready for it. It'll be oh, an original awesome. character, most definitely. Omega, the Rani, um. I, I think oh, I've been we haven't seen that one in a long while. Would Kate O'Mara approve, though? She's not alive oh, anymore. I think she definitely would. Maybe. Yeah. Michael uh... Dole would approve of Neil Patrick Harris, I think. Hmm. It's interesting. I saw Indira Varma in Mission Impossible recently, and I just thought of her character in the new series. Like, what kind of villain is she going to be? So she's also I, think, I, think, I think Jinx Monsoon might be an original villain, won't be like an incarnation of another um, past villain or so, but I think she'll be in a, there'll be an original character, I think it will be. Mm. You know, like and they'll be as iconic as Shara's Jet. Um who were the two villains in um Flux? Oh yeah. Oh, Swarm and Azure. Swarm and Azure. That's it, yeah. And also like the Balayard, um, the Rani is quite iconic for a villain as well, and the Master. So, they Jinx Monsoon will probably be an original character, but as iconic as them, probably. Mm, mm. Hopefully. That's my theory, and my way I see it. 
Because I remember when Azure and Swarm came out, people said, and I agree with them, is that they were like, there's like, there was, there was iconic bows for 13, like since Shadow's Jet, probably, you know. Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree. Don't forget about Indira Varma's Duchess, because she's literally in Torchwood, and now she's in the, like, now she's in the official series. Oh, yeah. Did your lightsaber went on? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to pull pull it, but I was trying to pull it back, and the the switches. Don't talk about your Who who Yang would not be impressed if you know what I mean? Hmm? Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Yang would not yeah, be it's, oh yeah. Speaking of that, it's such a. I gotta love like how this is such a David Tennant like resurgence. This is the we got. year of David Tennant. Literally. Okay. He's in Star I Wars, he's fact. in Good Omens, he's in Doctor Who, he's in... Uh, he, 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 he's he's exactly really doing it, Boca. He's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I still love the, the fact year that... Of David Tennant. I still love the fact that way back in 2017, because when they announced uh, DuckTales a few years... Uh, during those years... Oh, no, yeah, he's, because he's Alan Menken had passed away, and nobody knew who was going to do Scrooge, because those were like big mm -hmm. boots to fill, and then... David Tennant stepped on in, and it was like he fit the bill. Maybe because no he's Scottish, you know. He's he's not cross. Scrooge is not cross. He's just Scottish. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I agree. Um, do we spot in the trailer where Neil Patrick Harris had a load of roses? Oh yeah, him with the oh yeah, that cackle is just unmistakable with it. Also, I think he's running through the unit base. Oh, yeah, I he, saw that. Uh, yeah, he goes oh, through it like roses, open fire. Mason, do we know the roses when he does like this for the bit? He flips yeah. everywhere and stuff. Yeah, it was only very small. He, uh, I thought we saw it. Yeah, it could, it could be like a love heart kind of thing. Love, I'm getting love vibes from that sort of scene. Really, like he must like. Mm. Something's happened. He loves it, or something, you know. I or, do, think. or do you think he he's taunting the doctor because of, well, as we know, that Rose's daughter. But as he knows, Rose as Rose Tyler. So do we think Tom might be taunting Rose, the doctor? You can say. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Devin's getting flashbacks now. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no. He's getting flashbacks, definitely. A little bit. Also, the, out but, the outfit shoots he's wearing in the new trailer is different. It's a bit purple. It is different. He's got like a polo shirt. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, that, like yeah, how many it's outfits weird. does this man have? Like, yeah, it's, we it's, it's weird because, because it's weird because in, yeah, that, that was the one thing I noticed. Like, as like as soon as we hear the regeneration sound and then Jody's gasp, and then we see Shooty come on in and he's not wearing David's white button up and. And everything he's wearing a whole new outfit and i'm like knowing kn knowing what this was this was probably like a last minute sort of thing a last minute green screen sort of thing where they just had to get him in due to that and that's probably why they didn't switch the costume that's probably it you know there was a theory that the doctor the modern doctors will make a cameo but just for a few seconds because in Wild Blue Yonder, maybe David Tennant will try to regenerate, and then we see him flick through Christopher Eccleston, Matt Smith, Peter Capaldi, and even Jody, and then Shooty. And then that's where he says, someone tell me what the hell is going on here. And they just switches back to David. I'll be honest. Um, I kind of doubt that would happen, because obviously Chris Eccleston was obviously the first in the new series, Doctors, and he left because obviously him and Russell fell out and they had created differences so I doubt they'd work together again sadly. If it was to happen it probably would be like um, footage from um, a previous episode and Capaldi himself has said he doesn't want, he doesn't want he wouldn't come back to Doctor Who very sadly I kind of would like, as much as I love Chris to come back I'd love him to come back, as Capaldi to come back as well so I think sadly Matt and Jody they probably would be up for it but I doubt Chris and um, Peter would do it really. I'd be amazed if they did, but mm. I doubt that would happen. Well, maybe there won't be any like cameos, but there will be references because yeah. if Matt Smith comes yeah. back, 
it will be a bit like Dave the Doctor all over again, but just with the Celestial Toy Maker beat the Meep and the the Wrath Warriors. Is that what they're called? You've got the Wrath. Yeah, 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 the Wrath yeah. Warriors. You've got more chance of companions coming back from previous Doctors. So, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think she'll come back, but uh, because of unit, but um, one companion that I think may come back is 50 50 is uh, Karen Gillan and Amy Pond. So, the way I think the, the, the why I think this is because um, she may not, but there's a good chance. Uh, because a little while ago on her TikTok, she, she posted a video of doing some script, um, and a few weeks ago or a month ago she put why did i just put that on so she, she she shouldn't have done that so if she comes back rory will come back matt smith will come back so matt is the only doctor i can see returning um if there, if there was another doctor but it is unlikely and i probably think there's gonna be a shoot you and david Tennant. that's it but you never know there might have to be doctors hmm amy pond coming back that sounds interesting we haven't really seen that's like with, um, power, Yeah, when Power Docs again, and obviously we're all amazingly shocked that the classic Doctors came back. My only one criticism of that coming back is that we all saw Sylvester and Co- Sylvester and Peter in their outfits, saw Paul McGann in his outfit. I actually would like to see Colin Baker in his outfit. Hmm. Oh, yeah, because we never got to see him wear we've that. Never, yeah, we, we never got to see him in the rainbow suit in Power of the Dogs. No, we didn't have anything to say goodbye to. So. They, they, they could have got Bonnie Langford to do it. Because mm. he was in the um, counselling scene, wasn't she? He was in a very small scene, yeah. And they could have got William Russell um, with David Bradley. That would have been incredible. That would have been, that would have been nice, like, yeah. I think, I think a lot of the Doctors should have, even if they didn't, should have had their old clothes that they wore. It would have been nice. But yeah, it, I think so as well. Yeah, uh, because Sylvester, I, I'm I'm not sure if the Seventh Doctor was in his clothes or not. At, at one point, he might not have been. accurately, no, no, not accurately, no, no, because the Levati jumper is now a screen actor. I think that's what he wears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we only got to see Peter and Sylvester and Paul in their classic outfits. Well, Paul wore his Night of the Doctor one, and there were a few differences between. The waistcoat and the trousers were different because they couldn't find the original, but they had to redo a few of those they did. But mm-hmm. Peter Davidson was probably, in terms of accuracy, the best looking one. He looked really, really good. His his outfit was redesigned with the actual materials like, from when he wore it back in the eighties. But it was just it looked refreshed, it's clean, and it just looked right for the time. Really, you know, it it did. I just thought when Paul made his appearance on screen, I thought they just took the the outfit from the Night of the Doctor and they just stuck him in that. There was that was the only thing I had. There was similar was ones. No, it's totally different. Um, it's a, it's a new the one. Crowd is different. Yeah. Um. So from the scene where we see in the trailer that if we remember that we see this, um sky kind of portal and he says uh, uh, something has come into uh, this world and d- do we think that it's not the toy maker do we think they, they want us to think it's a toy maker and do we think it's something totally different that's coming Omega mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's in the no, anti-national world wasn't he or whatever else. yeah maybe that's a hard one really yeah it could be a could be the to- a to- an army that the toy makers assembled, maybe, or it could be the toy maker in big form, and that's when he starts like doing his puppeting and stuff. That makes sense. That would be pre- that be pretty amazing, actually. It, it, it sounds pretty good, actually. Yeah, and it gave it gave me Stranger Things vibes, kind of seeing all the the world with fire. <laughs> We're all just being like, who who theorists? Just theorizing what's going to happen next. Yeah. Well, we've got plenty of time to like really figure it out and make guesswork of it. That's one of the funnest things about being in a fandom is that you could just make complete guesswork of it. And How if you're right or maker? if you're not. How do you reckon they'll defeat the Toymaker? 
Well, isn't the toy maker immortal, so he can't be properly defeated? Yeah, no. Same, More of a celestial way. being. Well, back in the um, 66 story, um, the Doctor and him play a game, the logic game, and when the Doctor about to make the last move and about to win, he tells Stephen to fly the TARDIS. So the TARDIS go, flies off before like announcing that his next move. And the toy maker's world gets destroyed and they escape. So I don't know, it is quite a complicated one actually. And if he gets locked away in a tube with unit, maybe, or something like that, and he gets he gets locked in the black archive somewhere and he might come back in the future for shooting, you never know. Something like that maybe. I think that he will create a new world. Um he he will create a new world in this 60th anniversary. And I think there'll be a sacrifice. I think someone will die because all, all going back to uh, Dardic Khan's prophecy, um, someone will die. And if it's going to be Donna, if it's going to be someone else, I think someone will have to get sacrificed. Wilfred. If it's Wilf, I will turn off the TV. It can't be, no. surely. No, one hundred percent agree. I will be so mad. If it's Martha John. Yeah, no, I don't want it. No, no, I, I don't want to be Martha. I just want to be someone who no, I have I have a soldier from unit just like. Here's the no. thing, though, but that's such a that will move. Like that's, if that's rude. Like if the prophecy says that someone has to die, and it turns out that it's Donna, you know, Wilf would, in a heartbeat, take her <laughs> place. Yeah, it's definitely one of those, uh, it's definitely, um, it's definitely, because given his, uh, his background in the service, it's definitely more of a, oh no, we're just just gonna cut the wire. No, he will lay on a grenade and let the other guy crawl all over him if he had to. Here's the thing, got member as well, if it is Wilfred, then it wouldn't be the first time he's gone with prophecy, because, remember, he was the one who knocked four times. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. Oh. That property, he will not fall yeah. time. Imagine if it's Sylvia who just sacrifices us. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> uh, it would be Sylvia. Well, she got yeah. ultimate mum points. She might yeah. she she might have changed. Um but who knows? In Jacqueline King, she plays God in one of the tortured big finish series. Hmm. And she plays Sylvia, so you take care of that. Doctor. He will knock four times. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Me trying to be dramatic. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? I, ju- I just need Wilf. That's all I... This, this is all I want from the specials. I yeah, just want to see my boy. Something where else. is Wilf? I know he's there, but where is he? In his shed. <laughs> Just begging the trail, just begging the BBC to just show us a picture of Wolf. I'm glad I didn't know in the trailer. I'm glad we didn't see anything of him because I'd rather wait till the actual episodes to see him first. That's true. Very true. I, I just, I just want to see Will. Yeah. Um, and I will cry. I see him on on. on, on we'll, we'll all cry. Yeah, we'll send him on. See him uh, on the I, hill I, again. I, I, I think there'll be a tribute for him though as well, like in love memory of Bernard Cribbins, I think there'll be at the end credits or at the beginning even. If there is one, I will be in tears. I'll be bawling. It'll be like Elizabeth oh. Sanders one again. I'll be off. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. take much, but I'll be I'll, I'll just be a river. It's gonna be interesting to see. It is uh, going to be a, a tough bit to Say farewell, yeah. but it's going to be an emotional one. We got to power on through it. Yeah, oh, I just want to see what he says to the, the doctor again. So, where you been all this time? Oh, just seems cleaner. Yeah, it might do now. Yeah, that's the that's the other thing of it. We don't know what the what for David's interior is going to be because they can't reuse well I think they kind of can because they have they, because because of given the production values on this they have access to uh, like the technology used on the Mandalorian so technically they could recreate Jody's set in some sort of capacity to use as the interior probably 
but we're probably going to get something all new for David, or because I don't think they can reuse the one from 2008, the old core. I reckon um, the console they'll use will be the shooty, I reckon. Oh, the one with all the all the, fr the freaking white roundels. So the console the shooty gets, they'll probably do it for David at first, they probably will. Oh yeah, because we saw we saw concept art of that, and they were using a, a model of David's doctor standing at the console room for that. But we don't know if that's just going to be a thing for David, or if that's just. Who knows? I do hope, yeah, I do hope as well that the new fourteen Sonic they keep that with with Shooty as well, because that is a nice. Show Sonic. us how show us how this thing is like created. Is it from the TARDIS, or will he just magically have it? We have to find out. Well, I have to find. I have to find out how he gets the thing. I remember when that when this um because we all see him holding this thing and it's all in blurry shots. A lot of people didn't know what this thing was gonna look like, and I because me and a few friends of mine like after we were watching um Power of the Doctor and we were all discussing it. I always thought it was going to be something because it kind of reminded me of this one, and then the way the 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 cage here was kind of like this, and then with Matt and I, I guess it was right on the money, knowing that it did have like this sort of cage. Hmm. Yeah, it's nice. It it's nice feel to it. Yeah, I did. Yeah, and then the one with the white roundels, which is uh, the round things on the wall. Can you see them? It's the round thing. What I love for? the round things. I have no idea. Yeah, it, it's it's funny because I because way back before the the sixtieth was ever going to be a thing, I was role playing with a bunch of friends of mine, and I just decided to dream up like this hybrid console room. And the, one of the things that I did was bring the white roundels back, bring the white roundels back because I don't know there was such a I don't know something about them just drew my eye and then speculatively here comes like concept art and then set shots of the white roundels and I'm like oh this looks good yeah. weren't some of the original weren't some of the uh, cubby holes in the in the original in the original stuff like also, like cubbies where you could put your stuff in, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I've at one point in uh, the Husbands of River Song, like there was like a whole brandy, brandy. No, it wasn't the Husbands of River. It was, but also in Twice Upon a Time, there's brandy in one of the holes. Yeah, you know, in one of the the yeah, and I'm like. Oh neat! So we got cup. Oh neat! So we got storage cubbies. Nice. Hmm. I hope that we have an episode by in a new series. I hope there's an episode that just in the TARDIS again. That'd be nice. Oh, that would be nice to like revisit just like a whole episode in it. Yeah. I hope Shooty gets a cool like, song. Um, like Journey to Sense for the TARDIS, for example. That's quite an enjoyable episode. That is. Yeah. Does this mean we're gonna have like the the mini? We're gonna bring back the mini sodes as well, like the mini episodes that lead into the actual episode. I don't know actually. I'd like to have I, I... somewhere where hmm? I would like to, you know, like when David Tennant was like filming himself on set or like going to like the the the, the locations. It'd be nice if they did that again, maybe with shooting. Oh, where yeah. they did his uh video diary stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. We nice to have more of them. Love it. That would that would be really great too. That would be awesome. Really awesome. Um, so guys, l last things because we spoke about loads. We could speak about we could probably do a whole day worth of talking about this, but we have to go at some point. So I'm going to ask you one last question, which will get used in a like a video from everyone taking part. So. That's cool. And I'm going, I'm going to start um, reverse order. So I'll start with Devon. So 
the question is, if, if there's some, in for the 60th anniversary specials, is there something that you would want to happen or maybe someone that you want to return in the 60th? Uh, what, what do you want? Martha Jones, hands down. <laughs> because. Um, honestly, with whatever the 60th is going to give me, I'm going to be pretty happy with. I do actually want to see them give if they're they are going to send, you know, Bernard Cribbins off. Do it in a way where it's respectful, emotional, and it's something fun that we can look back on as well. Yeah. And then also with whatever other villains that they have thrown in the mix, really, really. Um, just like not only up the stakes, but also make these villains, like whether they're old or new, feel like that these are characters you want to see come back at least for another run for a few years in between. Everything needs to, it, it should feel memorable, but it's also going to be something you want to rewatch again and again. Maybe Reaping Angels? Mm, yeah. 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 Just, yeah, I, I, lo I love that. So, kind of a, a nice way to say goodbye to Wilfred. Um yeah. And and for it to be anything that you expect. Love that. Um Alicia, uh, Alicia, what would you like to see? Um no, I completely agree. I want a proper farewell to our beloved Wilfred, our space grandpa. <laughs> um and it I if I, if not a actual cameo from Martha Jones, since there is essentially confirmation she will be coming back, um, at least just a hint of her being somewhere within the unit area would be very nice. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Because Martha's story is very—it's not finished. It's, it's I think not. And. She's one of my favorite companions. Yeah, it's a very underrated one. Oh yeah, yeah. Extremely underrated. She is definitely, definitely. What would you like to see, Dylan? If you if you could pick something. Um. Well, so far I've loved and I'm amazed about what they've done with this trailer so far and what they've hinted. Um. Yeah. Give a fond farewell to Wilfred because you know it's the last thing he's ever he's ever done in films. Um, just be amazing, really, and yeah, just be amazing and really good. Really, I'm I'm really excited for what they're gonna do, and I'm excited for shooting Gatwell as well. So just yeah, do it do the do the sixtieth justice, really. Make it a good diamond anniversary. Um, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, definitely. Um, Matt, what about you? What would you like to see? For the 60th, definitely some return of companions. Hopefully Martha Jones will be back. And just the solution of how would the Doctor and Donna's story end and more about Celestial Toymaker and just Shooty Gatwa, I guess. Just Shooty Gatwa, yeah. Yeah, because I am, I, I like, I have a, this is my personal feeling, or maybe I haven't, ex or maybe this has happened before, but it was sort of like, I haven't experienced it before, because um, I don't think there was that too much of a reaction when Christopher Eccleston was leaving the show. When David Tennant left the show, it was definitely, there was definitely an uproar, there was anger, there was sadness. Um, Matt Smith was here and they're like, who is this, who is this man with the big chin? We want David Tennant back, we want the, the hardest doctor back. And then Matt Smith was like, oh my God, he's amazing. And then he's gone. And then Peter Capaldi came and they're like, who is this older Scottish dude who's not attractive at all? We want Matt Smith back. And then Capaldi was like, eh, we don't want you. We don't want you to go. And then Jody came and there was a little bit of a mixed reaction. Now with Shooty, there's also a mix, but more of a positive reaction, I think. Mm -hmm. So for, um, for maybe some of you I've experienced it before me. Like, what was it like with um was it like that? Like was the were the reactions of David, Matt, Capaldi, and Jody like kind of accurate to my description? 
Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, so, so like yeah. divide and depend on. I think I think it's interesting that most of us are pretty happy about the new doctor. Like it's not yeah, like yeah, half yeah. and half. Like the majority of us are happy about Shuti being the doctor. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Unless, uh, yeah, like it's not. I mean, it, Shooties was a overall reception, and then I remember because it's like we were seeing shots of like David come back, and we were wondering what, why he has this different outfit and all that before the clarification, and then everybody thought that oh, Shooty should have been number fourteen, and then I was like, okay, first of all, here we go again. <laughs> I was like, first of all, do not speak for an actor on the behalf to make it feel like that. Oh, like David doesn't deserve to come back, de deserve to come back, and everything. Shooty should just be number fourteen. David's could be like David's thing could be like a separate thing. Could be a separate thing. Let Shooty be like the actual fourteenth Doctor. Like David stole the fourteenth title from him and. It was just a whole mess, I remember. And I was like, Jesus, are we really going to be speaking on the actress's behalf on what role, what number got stolen by who and this and that? The actors don't need this. They don't, no, don't do this for them. No. True, true. That's it. That's, that, that's a real statement right there. True. But we can all confirm that everyone in here are excited about Shooty being the new Doctor, yes? Oh, definitely. Oh. I think, to be honest, when they announced the new Doctor, I, I was a bit surprised. Obviously, you know, I actually thought it would be a woman Doctor next again after Jodie. But other than that, I'm happy with it. I'm happy at the end of the day, you know. And I trust and I trust Russell what he's going to do. So I think I'm I the most Shooty excited well. because of the... I literally have the whole outfit on. <laughs> I think I'm the most excited. I know, of course. I know. <laughs> like literally, when I see like the sets of him in the Christmas special, I was like, I need that outfit. And like, I spent a whole a whole month trying to find a coat with this exact same shirt. Oh, and yeah. I found it. I was like, yes, finally. <laughs> and manifesting that Shuti Gatwa will approve. <laughs> Just manifest. Catherine, what are you most excited about for the 60th? I oh, know, I was waiting on that one. Oh. I know, because these boys... I know. Um, I'd like... I don't know if it's controversial to say, but I'd like it to be the last time we see David Tent as the Doctor fully. As much as I adore David Tent, I adore him, please. I just need to get that. No, I, I agree. He needs to be gone by this point. He come back for, like, like the classic doctors did in um jody's last episode he can do all that he can do big finish he can do audio books but this must be the last time we see him as the tv doctor Catherine, i i agree with you on that well i love david he's my favorite doctor as well but i'm like you've had you for the 50th make up for the 60th i don't mm. want you back for the 70th because you'll steal the whole crowd don't come back to the 70th you yeah know? david, I mean, not david can away. have a well-deserved break after the 60th yeah yeah, I mean, he can come back with special appearances, definitely. Plus, but, um, um, I don't know if David appreciates, like... I mean, he obviously does get happy with people recognising him as the Doctor, but I think he needs to... I think we need to appreciate his other characters more. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. Hu Yang, as it, um, Crowley, and also um, Barty Crouch Jr. and the Purple Man. We have to appreciate him. <clears throat> One more. One more. Who? Oh, Alex Scrooge! Party. No, Ooh. not just Scrooge. Oh, Alec, Alec Hardy. Hardy. Yes, Broadchurch. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't forget Broadchurch. Yes, we can't. We can't. We have to show these other actors appreciation, not just by be, not just by being the doctor. Yeah, I, 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 I agree, and I, I, I think that too. I, I, I think that David Tennant. Um, I think this is the last time we will see him as properly as the doctor, it's like on the like TV appearance, like, like now. Um. Wait till he comes back. <laughs> I mean, knowing them, he probably will come back. We'll see him maybe when he's older. But but yeah, I think I think it was like this. It wouldn't have been like this if things didn't change or like Doctor Who's views weren't the way it has been these last so many years. I think Shooty 
I guess they done it this way because maybe of Shooty's schedule, he couldn't do the 60th for him. Yeah, and he was, uh, yeah, because he was filming a the Barbie movie at the time, and he couldn't like do a full on series, which is probably one of the reasons why uh, we have we have David during that whole thing. And I think it's good because it, it, it it's a lot of pressure for a new a doctor to come straight in for a 60th anniversary special. So um, it's good that like Dave Tennant is back for that because it's a special appearance. So it's not like he's got his own series. He's only got like three out three episodes. Yes, and I was saying, um, just we should get a tribute for Bernard as well. But I think we should get a tribute for all the past, like companions who have passed away in real life. Like, I want to, I want a Sarah Jane proper send off. I want a reference. I need, I need closure for that. And I think um, if I ever have a TARDIS, I would time travel back just to say hi to Elizabeth Sladen and tell her she was one of the best classic companions to me. I think she knew. She knew lots and of. She dogs. got given her own spin-off, well, two, three spin-offs. So I think she might have known. Just, just to clarify, my list of favorite classic companions are Sarah Jane Smith, Joe Grant, Leela, and Ace. Cool. Yeah. That's Does any of you agree with my list? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, make sure, yeah. I, I would, add, I would add Jamie McCrimmon to your list as well. I would. Leela is truly underrated. Like very good, very good list. Um, last before we go, guys, if we all get our sonic screwdrivers and then we can wave them around like they like we do, and then you can say a good catchphrase if you want, or you can just sonic it. Wow, this is gonna be certainly fun, isn't it? Can't deny it's just a tiny bit fun. All right, 16th anniversary, how long do you? Geronimo! Someone has to quote the war doctor. <laughs> I don't say. No, I'm actually gonna do it with all the sonic. <laughs> all the sonic I have. Mine doesn't go up, so. We're, we're here at the sound. And last but not least, the data center. There we go. Woo! Very awesome. Wouldn't be surprised if they came up with a universal remote version for the of this thing. Would not be surprised. I'll get the mini me out again. I feel that she should be included. <laughs> <laughs> hey Devin, I have oh. your Sonic. <laughs> And nicked it from your you did not just do, you did not just do the fozzy bear laugh you did not just do that did i no i didn't yeah, did <laughs> was, was that my was that the fozzy bear laugh no seriously i don't know i don't know i swear to no, god that, yeah that was fozzy bear from from the muppets i haven't even i mean i know i know who kermit the frog and some of them are but do you just just just, just a little bit <laughs> yeah so well, have you seen that Muppet yeah. sketch with David Tennant as ten? Oh my god! If, I, oh, yeah. if, I, so one if, of if all I the was in, if I'd known he was in that show in costume, I would have bloody well gone. <laughs> I would have bloody well gone. All the Muppets if I'd are done. the Doctors. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Um. Well, thanks, guys, for all coming on today. Um. I think it's the longest episode of the series so far, I think. Um, Let's make it a good one, eh? Yeah, it's a very good one. A very fun one. Um, to anyone listening, watching, we hope you've enjoyed it as well. Um, as it's November. Um, a day in November that I don't even know yet. So, <laughs> but, well, um, time traveling again. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're all oh, we'll see. Time. But um, thanks, guys. And I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Um Alonzi. <laughs> See ya. Change my dear. Seems a moment too. This one's gonna be brilliant.